Well, and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Adam Cellini. Topping our news after more than 13 hours of jury deliberation, Andres Andy Avalos has been found guilty in the murder of three people. Avalos brutally killed his wife Amber Avalos before shooting neighbor Denise Potter and Pastor James Battle in 2014. His, he suspected his wife and Battle were having an affair, even though no one else could confirm that. Defense attorneys tried to prove that he was suffering from delusional disorder at the time of those murders. The defendant is guilty of murder in the first degree as charge. My understanding this would be a Avalos is charged with two counts of first degree murder for killing Reverend Battle and Denise Potter and one count of second degree murder for killing his wife, Amber. He now faces the death penalty, which state attorneys have said that they would pursue. And new tonight, we're learning more about a man who was found slain in the backyard of a Sarasota home. 33-year-old Alpha Victor Young had six kids and is described by his wife, Kaman Perry, as someone who would give you the shirt off his back. Perry says their youngest son, Alpha Jr., learned of his father's death during his spring football game on Thursday. The Sarasota Sheriff's Office is calling this a homicide investigation. Perry says her husband was shot, but the Sheriff's Office has not confirmed a cause of death. Family members, friends, and even some strangers of a Riverview High School student are together tonight to remember that teen who was fatally struck by a car last weekend on Siesta Drive. Matthew Batchy's family says the 16-year-old sustained brain injuries from the crash and eventually passed away on Wednesday. ABC 7's Erica Jackson joins us live from the memorials or memorial service in honor of Matt, which is taking place right now on Siesta Beach. Erica. Good evening. You can see a lot of orange behind me because all the attendees tonight are encouraged to wear orange, which is Matt's jersey color for his racing. And Matt's family confirms that he is one of two teens that were involved in the accident or the crash on Siesta Drive last weekend. He and 15 year old Erica Ross were trying to cross the street when they were hit by a car. Those attending tonight's service wearing that color and sharing their favorite memories of Matt Batchy. They're also adding their favorite stories and photos of Matt in a scrapbook. Like math was so fun because he's honestly will help you through anything with math, reading. He helped me through my life. I lost my little sister a year ago and he helped me through it. But it's, it's not the same with that Matt in class, not hearing his voice, his smile or anything. Investigators have not yet released the name of the driver involved in last week's crash. And according to the GoFundMe page for the other victim, Erica Ross, she's in the hospital recovering for some, from some bo broken bones, excuse me, and from internal bleeding. And we'll have more tonight at 11 on this memorial. Reporting live on Siesta Beach, I'm Erica Jackson. Adam, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Erica. And other news, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission has declared this Saturday as Lionfish Awareness Day. All day, divers have been hunting in the Gulf of Mexico for that invasive species in an effort to protect the communities of fish that live in those areas. Over the last decade, lionfish have significantly spread throughout Florida's waters. They're um, becoming a problem in many places, and right now we don't know of any um, marine predators that really control them. That's why humans are coming in to sort of be that predator and try to remove them. And they are invasive to our waters. They eat a wide variety of native fish and crustaceans, um, and we're concerned that that could really significantly alter uh, the fish communities here. Boat Marine Laboratory will be hosting its fourth annual Lionfish Derby between July 7th through the 9th in a local effort to combat, combat that invasive species. On Siesta Key today, three people had to be pulled from the water by lifeguards after getting stuck out in the ocean. This video from an eyewitness who says an older man was first seen struggling in the water by his wife. Then two younger men jumped in to try and help, but they were also stuck fighting the current. All three were eventually pulled out of the water by lifeguards, and that older gentleman could be seen uh, receiving some medical attention and lying flat on the sand. Witnesses say he was responsive and eventually left the scene with those sheriff's deputies. 
So you got to be careful in those waters and uh, windy. I guess it was a little bit windy out there, but very hot as well. Oh my goodness. We saw our temperatures, of course, back up into the 90s today, and we're starting to get that rain. So we've got the showers that are taking place in advance of a cold front across the southeastern part of the country, but we're also getting the rains right here across west central Florida, and those showers are taking place east of I-75 for the most part. Rainfall amounts are starting to get a little spotty, but in the last 24-hour period, Period, we have seen significant amounts of rainfall for our time. Finally, we're getting those rain showers. Last night, we got some strong, strong showers that came on through. We're hoping to repeat that kind of rainfall once again for tonight. Right now, we have temperatures in the 80s and some 70s. You can see where it's been raining in Northport, Boca, and also in Punta Gorda. Those are the rain areas. That's where the temperatures are coolest. And we'll let you know what's going to be taking place for tonight and for tomorrow. We've got rain in the forecast. We'll show you when that's going to be taking place. Adam. All right, Wendy, I think beachgoers might disagree with you on that, but just then. <laughs> uh, another news, the Northport Police Department and Charlotte County Sheriff's Office searching for a suspect involved in a vehicle burglary investigation. Units are searching the area of Veterans Drive and, excuse me, Veterans Boulevard and Wyland Drive for the suspect. The Sheriff's Office also sent a helicopter to scan that area and K-9 units have also been deployed. If you have any information on this investigation, you're asked to contact the Northport Police Department or the Sarasota County Crime Stoppers at the number listed on your screen. President Donald Trump has wrapped up his first day in Saudi Arabia, the first of five stops on a nine-day overseas trip. ABC's Karen Travers is traveling with the president all week and has the latest from overseas. President Trump mixing in a little culture with diplomacy, joining Saudi dancers performing in Arda, a traditional folk dance that involves swords. The dance capping a whirlwind first day for the president. Saudi royal guards standing at attention on a hazy hot morning. 81-year-old King Salman greeting the president and first lady. Later, the president receiving the kingdom's highest honor and locking down the first deliverable of the trip. Saudi Arabia agreeing to spend $110 billion immediately on military equipment and services from the U.S. and up to $350 billion over 10 years. That was a tremendous day. I just want to thank everybody. Hundreds of billions of dollars of investments into the United States and jobs, jobs, jobs. The White House pointing to this as a sign of the Saudis' eagerness to work with President Trump and strengthen the U.S.-Saudi relationship. Riyadh is ready to put on a show. American flags fly all over the city. The streets were clean. They even planted new palm trees. Billboards featuring President Trump's face and the face of King Salman lining highways. But political controversies swirling back home following the president overseas. ABC News confirming that a current White House staffer is now part of the federal investigation into whether there was collusion between Trump Divide associates and Russian officials during the 2016 yeah. presidential campaign. Uh, I do not have any information or knowledge regarding the person of interest uh, that's been referenced. But the White House hopes this trip will help change the narrative, pointing to the president's Sunday speech on radical extremism. It will sound very different from the president's heated campaign trail rhetoric on Islam. The White House says the goal is to unite the broader Muslim world against common enemies. Karen Travers, ABC News, traveling with the president in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And back here at home, it's been a long wait and much construction confusion, but the diverging diamond interchange will officially open to traffic tomorrow on I-75 and University Parkway. The pattern will shift traffic on University Parkway to the opposite sides of the road in both directions. Transportation officials are hoping all five lanes will be open, but there is a possibility that there will be some lane closure still. Drivers should pay attention to those signs and slow down as you work your way through that interchange. And also tomorrow, the news that shocked the Sun Coast and the circus community. After nearly 150 years, the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus will perform its final show in Uniondale, New York. You don't need a ticket to watch that performance live on Sunday. Feld Entertainment will be streaming it live on Facebook and on the circus's website. Still to come here on ABC 7, a disturbance on an American Airlines flight after officials say a passenger began behaving strangely. And a thrill ride made even more thrilling. Passengers stuck on a new Six Flags roller coaster on its opening day. 
Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. Attention. This is an important message for anyone who has taken Xarelto or Pradaxa. If you or a loved one took the blood thinner medication Xarelto or Pradaxa and was then hospitalized for internal bleeding, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Xarelto and Pradaxa have been linked to serious, even fatal internal bleeding. If you suffered a stroke, heart attack, or serious internal bleeding, or if a loved one died after taking Xarelto or Pradaxa, call us now. Our network of attorneys have years of experience fighting the big pharmaceutical companies and is ready to fight for you. Potential claims are being reviewed for users of Xarelto or Pradaxa who have suffered severe bleeding or hemorrhaging, stroke, or even death. Our network of experienced attorneys is ready to fight for you. You won't pay a thing unless your case is settled. Call today for a free confidential consultation. Don't fight this alone. Please call 800-928-6604. That is 800-928-6604. What Florida city is best known for space flight? Cape Carnival. Cape Carnival? Close enough. What condiment includes vinegar, molasses, and anchovies? West Chester sauce? Close enough. And now, a word from our sponsors. One off from the Florida Lottery. Now available for pick two, three, four, and five games. Miss by one on any or all numbers and still win. Another altercation on board an American Airlines flight, only this time passengers are heralding the flight attendant involved. A Turkish man identified as 25-year-old Anil Uskanil has been released from police custody after allegedly trying to rush the cockpit on a flight from LAX to Hawaii. A flight attendant is being credited with stopping that man. Passengers say he was acting strangely and that flight attendant using a beverage cart to stop him in his path. He was then subdued by passengers and an off-duty police officer before he had to be duct taped to his seat. He was screaming and talking to himself and then he walked up to the front with a blanket on his head. So she had, he had wedged in and he's pushing but then she says you're not coming in here. Several hours after the incident, the same man taken into custody again after he allegedly walked through a door leading onto an airfield ramp. But an airport police spokesperson says he allegedly only wanted to ask where he could get food. The man was found to have been drinking and was cited for misdemeanor trespassing and eventually released. A new roller coaster in Texas set to open today despite a mishap from a few hours earlier. The coaster at Six Flags over Texas and Arlington stopped in the middle of a ride just after midnight. Eight passengers were stranded for more than three hours before firefighters were able to rescue them. The roller coaster dubbed the Joker was scheduled to open to the general public today and Six Flags says it still plans to do so, but only after a thorough safety inspection. The mishap is blamed on severe headwinds. 
A bomb scare has caused the Cannes Film Festival to briefly evacuate the theater before the first screening of a film in competition for the uh, one of their prizes. Those attending the screening Saturday night were ushered away from the theater in the French Riviera City. Journalists were later told that the suspicious item was found to be not dangerous and after a delay of about 30 minutes, that theater was reopened. It's the wedding of the year taking place in Bradenton, excuse me, Britain today. The church full of royals ready to see Pippa Middleton tie the knot. The bride's big day coming six years after her sister's wedding to Prince William. ABC's Chuck Sievertson has those details. A modern fairy tale day for the world's most famous bridesmaid, now a picture perfect bride. Just because it's Kate's sister, and Kate's sister comes along with Kate, William, George, Charlotte. The crowds turned out to see Pippa Middleton get married. The young royals out in force. Princes William and Harry grinning as they walk to church. I think it's a wonderful way of seeing the whole of the royal family. Princess Kate's sister is stunning in her lace gown, an original by British designer Giles Deacon. Pippa getting a little help from the Duchess of Cambridge, a reversal of roles from Kate's big day back in 2011. I wanted to see the royals. I haven't seen uh, Duchess of Cambridge ever and the little children. Of course, it was the smallest guests who stole the show, Pippa's royal niece and nephew. Princess Charlotte, adorable as a tiny bridesmaid. Prince George, a cheeky page boy. Kate did say the other day that she was a little bit worried that they might not behave. <laughs> Obviously, they're only three and two. Kate did have her hands full, tending to all the little ones. Lots of smiles on the way into the tiny church in Englefield, where Pippa was marrying wealthy financier James Matthews. The kids clearly ready for fun on the way out. The ceremony drew the creme de la creme of British society, including Princess Eugenie, William and Harry's cousin, along with tennis legend Roger Federer. The guests then moved just down the road to the reception at the Middleton's country estate, where another woman could steal the spotlight, Prince Harry's date. We understand that he is going to bring his girlfriend, Meghan Markle, so that will be one of their first public appearances together. A perfect ending to the social event of the year. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News, New York. Do the, do the kids ever not steal the show at a wedding? <laughs> I know. If they're involved. You never want children or dogs on. in a show. <laughs> they're they're going to be the focal point, without oh, a doubt. Aren't they adorable? Very those, cute. those are going to make some beautiful wedding pictures, yeah, aren't they? Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. How <laughs> lovely. How lovely. And lucky for them, they were not sitting there in 92, 94 degree yeah. heat. Thank True. goodness, thank goodness. Well, we're starting to get those afternoon showers now starting to pop up on radar. And most of the rain now starting to move towards the north and west. And we're getting a couple of those showers, mostly east of I-75. But they're going to make their move in our direction along the coastline. So you can see that developing right now. And we're going to see this for around for the next couple of hours. Some of the showers are moderate to heavy as they're moving into portions of Manatee County. And we are also seeing showers developing and moving into central Sarasota County as well. Charlotte County has been getting rain now also for the past couple of hours. So we're going to see all of this continue for the next couple of hours, and it is going to be with w much welcome relief that we see this rain. As you know, yesterday we had downpours of as much as two inches of rainfall in certain pockets along western Florida, and we would love to see that kind of activity once again for today. We certainly can use the rain. For tomorrow, pretty much the same kind of thing. We are going to be seeing a couple of showers moving in across the panhandle. We'll get those showers developing over the interior part of the state, moving towards the coastline later on in the evening hours. And we do have a cold front that is producing these showers in advance of it across the southeastern part of the country. And this is a slow-moving system. It's a slow-moving cold front, but it will be moving across the state on Monday. And so that's going to give us some more opportunities for rain, which we could use. Now, our high temperatures today were certainly very hot, especially along the west coast of Florida. Notice the east coast seeing temperatures mostly in the 80s because our winds throughout most of the day were coming in out of the east. It wasn't until the latter part of the day that we started to see a shift and getting those sea breezes coming on in, and that's helping to cool us off right now. But today, we did not see a record high. Instead, we got temperatures around 92 degrees along the coastline. Venice reporting 90, Englewood reporting the same. 92 in Northport. Here was the hot spot was in Punta Gorda. And then over the central portions of our viewing area, we saw temperature readings of 93 degrees. But what will go down in the books 
is 92 for the daytime high today. And this is a record on this date set back in 1974. And we did not have a record today. That's the first time in days. So that was a welcome relief as well. Right now, temperatures mostly in the 80s and still some 90s. Up in Wachula, we're reporting a 90 degree reading. But this is where it's been raining. And so uh, we are a little bit rain cooled as a result of some of those showers that have taken place at the airport right now. It's 84 degrees. It's starting to cloud up a little bit more at the coastline. Those winds coming in out of the south southwest at around 10 miles per hour. And if you are heading out to the beach tomorrow, we're looking at the winds starting off out of the east southwest 10 knots seas one to two feet during most of the day it's going to be nice and lovely to go to the beach during the evening hours we're going to start to see those rain showers coming on through and so we do have a 30 percent chance of showers coming in during the latter part of the day throughout the evening and nighttime hours that's going to hold true for monday and tuesday as well the next cold front comes in on wednesday and thursday giving us our best chance of rain adam now, sports. The Rays are on a three-game winning streak, which includes the World Series runner-up and the team currently leading their division. Evan Longoria was last night's hero against those Yankees, breaking up a 4-4 tie in the eighth with the go-ahead RBI single. The Rays won it 5-4, which is their third against New York this year. And over the last three games, the Rays have outscored opponents 18-12 with a whopping eight-team home runs. Tonight's rematch with New York already underway, and they are leading 9-4 in the sixth inning there. Tom Brady continues to turn back the clock, a historic Super Bowl victory last season, his fifth with the Patriots, not to mention a fourth Super Bowl MVP award for his clutch performance. But at what cost? In a recent interview, Brady's supermodel wife, Giselle Bungeon revealed Brady suffered a concussion during the 2016 season, maybe even more than one, indicating Brady's 15 years as a starting NFL quarterback may be taking their toll. He had a concussion last year. I mean, he has concussions pretty much. I mean, we don't talk about it, but he does have concussions. Now the league and Brady's agents refuting those statements on Saturday, saying Tom was not diagnosed with a concussion last year. The Preakness countdown is on, and all eyes are on always dreaming. The Kentucky Derby winner is just one horse in the field for the second leg of racing's Triple Crown. The two-minute race is the main event, but like the Kentucky Derby, just as much energy is, uh, and focus goes into the experience before and after. Black-Eyed Susans are the signature drink this time of year at Pimlico Racecourse, and the track itself also has its own unique qualities for horses. Pimlico has been known as kind of a track that is kind to horses who are more forwardly placed, even closer to the rails. So that's obviously something that is going through the jockey's mind. 52, 52 horses have won the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness, but just 12 have won the whole Triple Crown. More to come here on ABC7. Stay with us. A promise was made. A promise that hit the beaches of Normandy. A vow that captured Iwo Jima. A contract that weathered Tet. A pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq. An IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earned. For help, visit DAV.org. I believe that home is where your pet is. And that loving an animal means never giving up on them, never letting them go. I believe that when you spare and neuter your pets, you help decrease the number of homeless animals. Because every dog and cat deserves a place to call home. I believe that I found my best friend at a shelter. And you can too. We believe that together with Best Friends Animal Society, we can bring about a time when there are no more homeless pets. Visit ambassadors.bestfriends.org. Check out mysuncoast.com slash dining, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. For years, I've told everyone my Craftmatic adjustable bed was the greatest until I got the new Craftmatic Legacy. It has an adjustable pillow feature that's awesome. You're going to want one, too, when you see how little they cost.
If you've ever had a bad night's sleep, call and price the new Craftmatic Legacy. It has so much more than other adjustables and still costs up to 50% less. Featuring a rising adjustable pillow rest, bedside power plugs, under bed night lights, and more. Available in all mattress types with optional heat and soothing massage. For as much as half the price of Tempur-Pedic Sleep Number and other adjustables, enjoy temporary relief of low back pain, nighttime heartburn, mild arthritis. Adjust the rising pillow feature to help align your head, neck, and shoulders. See for yourself with our 30-day in-home trial. So call Call and price one today for less, up to 50% less. You get so much more and it still costs less. You got to see how little they cost. Call 1-800-237-0214. That's 1-800-237-0214. Call 1-800-237-0214. Call now. Are you paying too much for your cable or satellite TV? The U.S. government passed a bill mandating free over-the-air digital transmission of all broadcast network television channels. That means with the new TV Freeway digital antenna, you can get free HD programming from your favorite broadcast networks 24-7 without a bill. You just plug it into the back of your TV and start watching all of your favorite broadcast programs for free. There are no contracts to sign, no hidden fees, and no monthly fees. Just free HD broadcast TV. Take it with you anywhere. Call or go online now to get your TV freeway stick for the incredibly low price of only $14.99. But wait, call or click now and you can get a second TV freeway stick for a second TV. Just pay a separate fee, but you have to order right now. Call 1-800-809-5196 to get your TV freeway. Call now or go to tvfreeway.com. So call 1-800-809-5196. This offer's not in any store. Call now. The Sarasota County Sheriff's Mounted Patrol made an amazing discovery this week. While working near the Walmart on Cattleman Road, the horses spotted something a little unusual. When the patrol went to check it out, they found an orphaned kitten hiding inside some bushes. Deputies relocated that kitten to a shopping cart until Sarasota County Sheriff's Office Animal Services could arrive. But in the meantime, they say their four-legged partners were very protective of that kitten. Oh, how sweet yeah. is little, that? Little animal instincts <laughs> helping out on patrol there. That's a great story. How I about that? How about like the that. horses? The horses spotted the kitten. I love, I love horses uh, and, I, and kittens. Doesn't like kittens. I mean, what a great story! Even if you that don't is. like cats, you gotta love kittens. Of I mean, course. they're adorable. Of course. Well, if you're heading out to the beach, get out there quick because the rain is falling. Uh oh. We'll see you guys later on tonight. We answered the call of duty and left our homes to serve in far-off lands. Now we answer another call. This time at home, in our own communities, to respond in times of chaos, to use our strength our skills, and our experiences to bring hope amid devastation and destruction. Together, as a team of brothers and sisters, we're continuing our mission to make this country a little stronger and a little better each day. We are Team Rubicon.